Hey what's up everybody, in this video I'm going to look at Novartis AG and Bristol Myers Squibb. I'm going to compare their balance sheets, look at their profitability, and use an intrinsic valuation model on both companies, and ultimately try and figure out which one is the better investment right now. Alright let's get started. So let's have a quick look at their stocks, Novartis, ticker symbol NVS. Market cap of close to $200 billion, yielding about 3.6%. It says the PE ratio is about 24.8. However, this is the problem with a lot of the financial websites that I've found. Is that when you go and you look at where that PE ratio comes from, what you're going to find is it really varies depending on which company you're looking at. This refers to the trailing 12 months PE ratio using GAAP, which is the preferred method. GAAP is generally accepted accounting principles. The non-GAAP measure is a whole lot better, not surprising, usually the way it goes. The problem here is that when you look at a company like Bristol Myers Squibb, they are trading supposedly at about an eight and a half times PE ratio. Market cap about 140 billion, yielding 3%. Okay, pretty similar, except the PE ratio looks way better compared to Novartis. The problem I find is that when you look at the details, their PE ratio forward for non GAAP is 8.5. Yeah, that's great. But I prefer the GAAP, and when you look at the GAAP, it's 17.97. So pretty huge difference there, and when you account for that difference, the value of BMY looks a whole lot closer to NVS. Here is some information about Novartis. 80% of their revenues come from innovative medicine segment. These are patent protected prescription drugs. The other 20% comes from generic drugs, which is called the Sandoz division. Now, Novartis has some customer concentration. They do not reveal the names of their major customers in their filing. They do reveal, though, that their three largest customers account for 17, 11, and 6% of their revenues, respectively. Here is some information about Bristol-Myers Squibb's revenues. Their report was a whole lot more transparent, in my opinion. You've got revenues broken down by the actual patents, the actual prescription drug names there. I can't pronounce any of them, so we'll just move on. They also broke down their revenues by geographic region. They have some concentration in the U.S., but, you know, not super concentrated, with 23% of their sales coming from Europe and 14% from the rest of the world. One thing I don't love to see is that Bristol Myers Squibb has pretty severe customer concentration. You can see here their top three customers account for about 75% of all their sales total. And it's the usual three healthcare providers Cardinal Health, Amerisource Virgin, and McKesson. <laughs> It's important to consider the concentrated customer bases of these two firms and the fact that BMY is even more concentrated. When you look at the research, concentrated customer bases are associated with greater risk generally, higher cost of capital, more stringent terms than any debt. So if the company wants to borrow money and you've got a concentrated customer base, it's usually going to cost you more. And these companies generally have higher stock price crash risk. So it is something worth noting. If you're enjoying the video so far, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Really helps to support the channel. Thank you. Let's compare the two balance sheets of Novartis and Bristol Myers Squibb. Right away, I see that Bristol Myers Squibb has higher leverage with a higher debt to assets ratio, a higher total liabilities to assets ratio. It's worth noting, however, that Novartis has worse liquidity right now with current ratio and quick ratio both below one. 
Bristol Myers Squibb's doing better in that respect. So, you know, no liquidity issues for them. If you don't know any of these ratios, check them out in the description below. Interest coverage ratio is a measure of long-term solvency. It's pretty good for Novartis right now. Uh, for Bristol Myers Squibb, it looks very bad. We'll have to look at their income and see whether that is an anomaly, whether, you know, they just reported abnormally low earnings this year, which would drive down the ratio. Uh, you know, they both have very little cash on their balance sheets, and they're pretty long-term asset intensive. Not surprising, guys. A lot of patents on those balance sheets. So overall, I got to say the winner right now is probably Novartis, but it's pretty close. So here we're doing a DuPont analysis. If you don't know about that, check out my video on DuPont analysis in the description below. All we're doing is comparing the profitability of the two companies and all the components of that profitability, the ROE or return on equity. We break it into its parts. So I took the five years, like look at at least five years, get a good sense, took the average, and right now, you know, Bristol Myers Squibb is coming out on top with an ROE of about 17% compared to about 13% for Novartis. It's interesting though because Novartis has far superior margins. Novartis coming in at 19.8% net income margins. What that means is for every dollar of sales they're able to generate, they're able to, to keep about 19.8 cents in profit. Very good. Uh, more than twice as much as Bristol Myers Squibb there with 8.3%. Where I see Novartis really suffering is the asset turnover. That is a measure of how efficient you are at generating sales with your existing asset base. You know, for Bristol Myers Squibb, for every dollar of assets, they get about 60 cents of sales every year. Not amazing, but a lot better than getting 36 cents, which is what Novartis is doing. And the final piece, which really puts Bristol Myers Squibb over, over the top here, is the equity multiplier. So their equity multiplier is a little bit higher, and that means they're essentially, they, they have higher leverage. So it's actually pretty close here. Both companies have pretty good business. Let's compare their dividends. Novartis is yielding 3.66%, pretty good. Payout ratio is about 50%, which means they're giving you about half of their profits as a dividend. The other half they are reinvesting or buying shares back. The five-year growth rate is an average of 3.3% per year, and they have a streak of growing dividends of two years, which, you know, is not very good. Compare that to Bristol Myers Squibb, yielding a little bit less, 3.07%, but look at the big difference here in, in all these other metrics. Payout ratio, 26%. So they're only giving you a quarter of their profits. They're actually reinvesting 75% or, or buying shares back, making Bristol Myers Squibb dividend actually a lot more attractive. Their five-year growth rate is 4.6%, and they've been growing it every year for 14 years. So Bristol Myers Squibb, definitely the winner on dividends. All right, here are growth expectations for Novartis. They're pretty modest. Earnings per share is expected to grow about 8.75% next year and then drop to about 5.7 to 7.3 and so on. Compare that to Bristol Myers Squibb. They are covered by 19 analysts for next year at least and they're supposed to be growing quite a bit next year. Earnings up about 16%. Afterward, we're looking at, you know, pretty steady, pretty slow growth, pretty similar to Novartis after that. All right, guys, so at this point in the video, what I want to do is use an intrinsic valuation model to try and come up with a fair value for Novartis and Bristol-Myers Squibb. 
I think they're both good companies. They're really not amazing, but they both look to be nice companies to invest in. And it just depends which company is a better value right now. So we're going to take those analyst forecasts. We're going to plug them into a free cash flow to equity model. We'll make some adjustments for reinvestments. We'll try and forecast the free cash flows for the next five years. Afterward, we'll estimate some kind of steady state growth rate. It's important not to use a dividend discount model when comparing these two companies because their payout ratios are very different. So Bristol-Myers Squibb with 25%, Novartis with 50%. Novartis is generally going to look like a much better deal with a dividend discount model. But we need to use a potential dividend model here. That's why I'm opting for the free cash flow to equity model. So let's look at the spreadsheet and see which one's a better deal. All right, guys. So here we are looking at a valuation matrix for Novartis. Every cell is the fair value of Novartis, assuming a certain discount rate and assuming a certain growth rate in free cash flows for the next five years. After year five, we're just going to figure on 2% growth per year. A little conservative, but I like to be conservative. So, for example, uh, I think probably this cell for me is most likely, based on analyst forecast, $86.99. That would be the fair value using a 7% discount rate and assuming cash flows can grow at 6% per year over the next five years. That's what that means. Another way of looking at it is a required rate of return. So if I require an 8% rate of return and I think they're going to be able to grow cash flows at 10% for the next five years, that puts me in this cell right here. I can't pay more than $86.22 if I want to get that 8% return. Okay, so is it a good deal? Kind of depends which assumptions you're, you're going on. If you look at the matrix below, it helps you visualize it. I give you the percentage it's over or undervalued by relative to the stock price today of around $87. And I color code it. So, you know, it's a great deal if you want a 6% return. You know, I mean, it could be very undervalued. It's kind of a fair deal if you want a 7% return. If you want more than 7% return, you're probably not going to get it with Novartis unless the analysts are very wrong here. Here we have the valuation matrix for Bristol Myers Squibb. Overall, you can see it's not going to be a good deal unless you're in the more optimistic part of the matrix here. So you got to be assuming a higher growth rate for the next five years, and you have to be assuming a lower discount rate. You can see that better in the matrix below where I color code everything. Yeah, it could be as much as 28% undervalued if they're able to grow cash flows 10% per year over the next five years and you want a 6% return. That is the most optimistic though on average here. It's just not going to be a good deal. Hey guys, here are my final thoughts on Novartis and Bristol Myers Squibb. So Novartis has a better balance sheet, although it's fairly close. Theirs is a little bit better. It's also worth noting that Bristol Myers Squibb has a very high customer concentration. That is a risk you got to think about. Both companies have pretty similar profitability actually. When you look at organic profitability, Bristol Myers Squibb coming out a little bit on top due to their higher leverage. But the organic portion of that, it's actually pretty similar. And I do like the fact that Novartis has such high margins. They can always get a little more efficient with their asset use, but those margins reflect pricing power in the market. I like to see that. Finally, with the intrinsic valuation analysis, neither company seems to be an amazing deal right now. It may just be one of those times you want to wait and see, you know, watch the stocks for a while. That being said, if I had to pick one right now, it would probably be Novartis. So that's just my opinion. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching.